everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, our readings. You may notice we're reading a different book today because as I discussed last week, I wanted to branch out and read more stuff and introduce people to new projects. So we will continue uh, Scum Villain and have an official's blessing. But first, we're going to read a little bit of a story called Female General Eldest Princess, shortened to Forget. Uh, probably the most famous uh, female love story in the the internet as of right now from Chinese web novel from the Chinese web novel genre um, it's a historical story I don't know if it's got magic and stuff in it I don't know that much about it I am going into this blind uh, so you know warning uh, it is going to be a blind reading I am gonna jump back real quick and check the warnings here make sure we're not jumping in too blind um, it's a war story where the main characters are the princess of the enemy nation, I think. Or, no, not the, that's a different story. She, this author is very famous for writing uh, these novels, it has like five of them, and I believe is actually a, a lesbian. I don't know how we know that, maybe she confirmed it on the internet, but uh, anyway. Hello, Natasha, Daniel, Phil, Alexis, come on, wake up. Couldn't preview file, there was a problem. What the heck? Did you crash internet? Don't do that. Ay, 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 ay. All right, let me open this again. Anyway, so the main character disguises herself as a male soldier to be able to fight in the war, and the love interest is the princess of the nation who is uh, trying to lead everyone in this turbulent time. So we're going to read that. And also we're going to have some better translation or better pronunciations because I found out um, I have a book called The Story of the Stone, which is a Chinese classic from Penguin Classics. But what it has in the very beginning that I never noticed until I started reading it is a whole introduction and description of how to say Chinese words. I've been practicing and I have it open in case I need to double check, but I think I'm pretty good at, at the pronunciations now. It's just making it come more naturally and not mispronouncing it, right? Mis mispronouncing it. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we have any warnings. Uh, no warnings? I wanted some warnings. Disclaimer. It won't load any more pages. Why not? All right, I guess my tablet doesn't want to work, so I'll just read it on the PC. I already had it pulled up anyway. All right. Sorry about the issue. I don't know why. Uh, let's see here. I'll pull that up. Hello, Kohi. <laughs> Hello, Nafi. Um, I don't know. I've just heard. I don't know a lot about this series the way that I do some other ones. I've heard through the grapevine that the author, who's called Please Don't Laugh, um, that's the, the pseudonym, uh, I've heard that she's canonically a lesbian. I assume maybe something on, the ch on Weibo or something that has been confirmed. I don't know. But uh, that's what I've been told. I could be wrong, but uh, here we go. Now it will pull up. I don't know why it wouldn't before. Now we have our chapters, but before we have our chapters, since this is a blind reading, I want to make sure if there's a, a warnings, if there's any tags. No, it doesn't look like they warn for anything. So maybe it's a pretty tame story. All right, this setting is a Han and Tang dynasty fabricated historical fiction. So no magic or anything. Okay, basically historical fiction. Welcome to Female General Eldest Princess. Chapter 1. Wan Yua becomes Fei Xing. Blood dyed the earth beneath her feet. It dyed the small stream of the village red. Corpses lay all over the ground. Every single corpse had a familiar face. Those faces were stained with the red of fresh blood, their expressions twisted. The walls around the village had already collapsed. Half of the village had turned into scorched soil, and the air was thick with the iron stench of blood. Lin Wanyue found her dad's corpse. Her, his hand was still tightly wrapped around the shoulder pole used to fetch water home. He gripped it so tightly, tight enough that the 14-year-old Lin Wanyue could not pull it from her dad's hand, even at her full strength. Ultimately, she had to bury her dad along with the pole, together with her mom and younger brother. Her mom. She found her mom's corpse on a dirt road by the village. Her mom had tightly hugged her 14-year-old younger brother in her arms, but her body had been pierced through along with her younger brother. They were speared together. 
The first time that Lin Wanyua had heard the sound of a weapon moving against flesh was when she had used all of her strength to pull out the spear from the bodies of her younger brother and mother. Ah! Lin Wanyua gasped coarsely as she sprang up from the wooden bed. There were snores rising and falling one after another all around her. Lin Yu, who slept by her side, was the only one woken up by Lin Wanyua's cry. As he rubbed his eyes drowsily, he said to her, Shin Ge had a nightmare again. Then he mumbled something incoherent as he turned around to go back to sleep, as if this was a common occurrence. As Lin Wanyua continued to gasp for breath, she gripped on her sweat-soaked clothes made of coarse cloth, though she would absolutely not take them off. Two years had already passed. Her dad, mom, and younger brother had been killed by the Huns two years ago, but she would still dream of that day from time to time. It was immeasurably clear, immeasurably realistic, and it would reappear again and again and yet again. But other than being shocked awake and covered with sweat every time, she would never hate this unyielding nightmare. She would even carry some anticipation for it whenever night fell, because this was the only place she could see her parents and younger brother again. Ouch! What a start! Lin Wanyua huffed out a heavy breath, then stood up from the floor that was covered with a hard wooden board. She walked out from the military tent that housed a total of 15 people. Who's there? Lin Wanyua was spotted by a sentry in the instant she walked out from the tent. As it was presently a period of war, danger was apprehended in every sound. No one could afford to be careless. Reporting, infantry soldier from Yi Camp, 3rd Unit, Lin Feixing. Lin Wanyua reported her unit in a practiced manner. The patrolling soldier before her let out a breath. He checked Lin Wanyua's nameplate carefully as he gripped a halberd and a shield, then turned around to leave. Lin Wanyua looked up, seeing a full moon that hung in the night sky. Ghostly white moonlight cast over the entire military camp. Long years of battle had turned this area uninhabitable. The Li Kingdom and the Huns have struggled on this long borderline for about three years now. Both sides had an equal amount of victories and losses. <laughs> See, <laughs> I had that thought, Kohi. I went into this blind, haven't read it yet, and that's the song I picked. <laughs> So, it is a little... Let me see if I can find something a little less cheerful. Um, I had thought about reading it ahead of time, but it would take me a long... I mean, these books are very, very long, and it would take me a while to be able to read any of them. I guess I could... But still, we would still have issues where if we came to a chapter and I didn't know what was happening, I would still just be not knowing. Um, so, I guess we'll just change the music as we feel it's appropriate. <laughs> Let's see where we were. This is very well written, well translated. Uh, let's see here. This stretch of land was turned into a wasteland under the treatment of the Huns and the Lee Kingdom. Not even the stubbornness of weeds would be able to break through the soil that had been macerated with flesh, fresh blood and then stamped solid by horse hooves. Here, there was no humming of bugs that Lin Wan Yua was familiar with as a kid. There were no other sounds other than the snores that traveled faintly through the entire military camp. Lin Wan Yua fell in a trance as she looked at the moon in the sky. Her mind returned to that place in her dreams once again. At the outskirts of the Li Kingdom, there was a small village called Chanjuan Village. Ch yes, Chanjuan Village. Chanjuan. Chanjuan. Chanjuan? A N after U is like a N as in hen. Chen. Chanjuan. Chanjuan. And in that village, there was a fami family of four. The father of that family was the only teacher in the village. Hence, he was the most respected person other than the village chief and head guard. The mother of the family was good-natured and demure. They had one son and one daughter, who were born as twins. The older sister was named Lin Wanyua, when the younger, was, the younger brother was named Lin Feixing. They were clever and endearing children, but all of this ended two years ago. Lin Wan Yua was bright and energetic, and her younger brother, Lin Fei Xing, was more modest in comparison. The 14-year-old Lin Wan Yua had sneakily ran away to the mountains once again, as she was ready to find some of those medicinal herbs that the old doctor who lived in the east of the village had taught her about a few days ago. But when Lin Wan Yua returned to the village once the sun had fallen behind the West Mountain, she found the entire village had been massacred by the Huns. 
No one other than herself had survived. Lin Wan Yua buried her own parents and younger brother, then she faced the remaining village full of corpses that had died in a horrific state. She carried them one by one. In the end, even when a lot of corpses had already started to sink, stink and were being eaten by maggots, Lin Wan Yua was still not done burying all of them. In the end, she had to set the entire village on fire. She kneeled at the entrance to knock her head heavily on the ground three times, then said, Every uncle and auntie, Wan Yua is young and weak. I truly do not have the strength to bury everyone one by one. All I can do is provide this fire to prevent everyone from wasting away in the wilderness. Now that everyone has returned to dust, leave this grudge for the one that had survived to take on. As women could not become soldiers, Lin Wan Yua used her younger brother's identity to live on. Lin Wan Yua traveled alone for several hundred miles. Once she got hungry, she wanted food. When she was unable to get food, she would find some wild vegetables and bark to st stave her hunger. She would also need to be wary against people who seemed compassionate, as they might actually be human middlemen. For the entire journey, Lin Wan Yua felt as if her past self had already died with her parents and younger brother in Chun Juin village. Uh, by human middlemen, it probably means slavers. People that like, oh, are you homeless? Are you? We'll help you. And then, you know, kitching, you're stuck in prison and slave. Finally, Lin Wan Yua arrived at the military camp led by the Li Kingdom's well-renowned General Li Mu. She enlisted, wait, is it, uh, yeah, I was right, Li Mu. She enlisted using Lin Fei Xing's name. However, her family was not of military registration. In the Li Kingdom, the five professions of officials, military, farming, labor, and merchant were separated clearly. People's various professions rarely changed throughout the generations. Unless it was permitted by the court, common folk who were not of military registration could not enlist in the army. Seeing that her last hope that motivated herself to keep living was about to be extinguished, Lin Wan Yua dropped to the floor. She kneeled before the name registration clerk. Sir, I'm begging you, let me enter the troops. The clerk wasn't that old. He was not over 25 or 6, so how could he remain composed when an adolescent was kneeling before him? He threw away the brush in his hand in a hurry to help Lin Wan Yua up. He said with difficulty, Child, aren't you putting me on the spot here? You're not from a military family. I can't make that decision. To change registrations isn't a big matter, but it's not a small one either. I'm just someone who became a mere clerk because I can recognize some characters. I don't have that authority. Hmm. Identity theft is not a joke. Well, she's not joking about it. She's getting revenge about it. Sir, I'm begging you. I'm begging. My whole village had been killed by the Huns. My dad, my mom, my older sister have all died. If I hadn't run up the mountains to play, I would not have the life to come here. Other than me, no one out of 118 lives in the entire village had survived. Chen Juen village was strewn with corpses everywhere. So many corpses started to sink, but no one could stink. Why can I not talk? But no one could help me bury them, so I burned the village. I walked all the way here just to enlist in the army. Sir, I am begging you. Lin Wan Yua spoke with sorrow and grief, but she did not cry. She simply kneeled there firmly as if she was pillar nailed to the ground, letting the clerk pull her to no avail. The clerk had heard of what happened to Chen Juan village before. He could see that Lin Wan Yua's clothes were tattered and dirty. Her expression was pained with sorrow, yet utterly resolute. Then he noticed her feet, one of which was wearing a shoe whose sole had already worn through. The other shoe had gone missing. There was black and reddish soil in its place instead. Seeing this, the clerk was moved. The clerk stood still to study this adolescent for a good while. Ultimately, he gritted his teeth, then said to Lin Wan Yua, I guess I've got nothing to lose. I'll go see the commander-in-chief right now. But whether it goes well or not is up to heaven's will. You and I will agree beforehand if it does not go well. Do not continue to badger me. Lin Wan Yua did not answer. She simply knocked her head to the floor, expressing her stance on the matter. A while later, the clerk came back to bring Lan Wu Lin Wan Yue to the big tent. 
When Grand Sen General Li Mu saw Lin Wan Yue, he simply gave a few words of condolences. Then he sent the adjutant by his side to change Lin Wan Yue's farming registration to a military registration. Just like that, Lin Wan Yue took on the name of her blood-related younger brother, Lin, Lin Feixing, to live on in this world as a soldier. Two years swung by since then. For a woman to dress as a man and enlist in the military, and to register under a false identity, these were both serious crimes in the Li Kingdom. Added together, it would be enough to get her beheaded. But Lin Wan Yue did not care. What was there to be afraid of? Her entire family had died. She was surviving just to give justice back to her parents, her younger brother, and the 118 lives in the entire village. Wow, intense. That's our first chapter. Um, apparently, it gives some translations for what the names mean. Apparently, her her real birth name is, uh, like, Moon. Her uh, The brother's name that she takes over is Star, Flying Star. And the village means moon. Used to... Chanjuan means the moon, used to describe loveliness of women in the ancient writings. Hmm, some star imagery. Interesting. Hello, Neil. Welcome. Thanks for joining us, folks. Very interesting. And I wonder how much the family being tied to specific jobs is historically true. Because it makes sense if your whole family, like, we talked about how ancestor worship has a lot to do with the fact that the entire family depended on each other, they all lived together, they all had, like, the same kind of job fields, I guess. So maybe that kind of thing might have been inherited and you might only have been able to work in the farm or the whatever. I don't know. I don't know how realistic that is. I'll have to look more into that. Chapter 2. What's there to fear of death on the battlefield? Um, I don't know. I'm going to assume the rest of this is going to continue to be sad for a while, so we'll still keep the sad music. Next time, I'll try and find something that's just, like, mood neutral, since I'm not going to be able to predict what's going on. One. Uh, ho. Ho? What would that be pronounced? O-U. I think that's a ah. Uh, like the sound in old or bow. Bull. O, O, Ho. One. Ho. Two. Ha. One. Ho. Two. Ha. Getting into... We're, this is the training montage, right? <laughs> the day had barely brightened, but drills had already begun in the drill grounds. Lin Wan Yua gripped the spear in her hand. Following the cries, she moved me methodically... God, I'm, tra I'm trading some pronunciations as correct and then saying my own English words incorrectly. I'm thinking too much about what I'm saying and I'm tripping over everything. Hello, Bonich. She moved methodic she, she moved methodically with actions that had already become second nature to her. Each and every blow was exerted at full strength. Lin Wan Yua knew it clearly. The single gesture and motion that appeared simple was her foundation to survive. After being in the troops for two years, she would actually count as a veteran now. Her comrades that enlisted at the same period had either died, lived to become a group leader, or were transferred to important divisions like the Cavalry Battalion, all except for her, who still remained as a normal soldier, an infantry soldier, with the highest death rate. But Lin Wan Yua did not mind it. She was already a woman living in the military camp. To get promoted it meant riches, but it would only mean more danger for her. All that she wanted to do was take revenge by killing 118 people. After that, she would quit the troops and find a village to live out in the remainder of her life, or die in battle on this piece of land, though she leaned more toward the latter. <laughs> Sad. Ever since Lin Wan Yua stepped into this military camp, she'd never thought about leaving this place alive. But Lin Wan Yua would quietly tell herself before the start of every battle that as long as that number had not been reached yet, she must definitely, absolutely, do her best to stay alive. The physical differences between women and men start to gradually appear following the increase in age. The lads that had enlisted in the same period had started to shoot up in height, all except for Lin Wan Yua, who was neither growing too quickly or too slowly. Two years of training had made her look somewhat taller and stronger than average girls of the same age, but when she was thrown among this group of soldier men, she still appeared small and skinny. But it was not only that. For her force of strength and endurance was also lower than the others. The only natural way to compensate for that deficiency was to train harder than the average person without stopping. Fortunately, no one had ever suspected Lin Wan Yue's gender, which made sense. 
Those of the military registration who had prospects or wealth would all want to spend a great deal of money to change their registration. How could there possibly be a woman mixing in suicidally? Once the drill had ended, it was time to eat. The crowd headed to the tent in twos and threes, while Lin Wanyua walked alone behind the troop. Shinge, Shinge, Shinge. Lin Yu leapt out from behind Lin Wan Yua to hug her by the shoulders cheerfully. Lin Wan Yua flashed out from under Lin Yu's arm without leaving a trace, but she did not leave him too far. She nodded to Lin Yu without any expression, then they walked towards the canteen together. In regards to Lin Wan Yua's coldness, Lin Yu had already gotten used to it. He did not mind it either. He walked with Lin Wan Yua shoulder to shoulder, talking about some small household affairs. Oh. Bye, Bonich. Thanks for joining us. Have a good one. Lin Wan Yua was the first friend that Lin Yu had made when he came to the military camp. He was 14 at the time, while Lin Wan Yua was 15. Lin Yu's family had been in the military for generations, but Lin Yu was as small and skinny as a carrot at 14 years of age. When he was assigned to Lin Wan Yua's shared tent, only the space beside her was still vacant. Most of the big soldiers in the tent had already reached the height of adult men. When they saw this little carrot walk in shyly as he hugged his luggage, all of them laughed playfully as they went ahead to ruffle Lin Yu's head. All except for Lin Wan Yua, who stood outside the crowd, studying Lin Yu with a cold expression. But she did not lay a hand on him. Lin Yu called Lin Wan Yua Shinge from then on. Even though Lin Wan Yua did not express anything towards this, she still had saved Lin Yu's life a time and again on the battlefield. I should remind folks of a couple things. Um, Shinge is like a friendly nickname because the name she's going by is Fei Xing, so it's the shortening of her name, and Ge is uh, like Big Brother. It's a, it's like a, a I don't I don't know if honorifics the term, but it, it's something you append to a name to be like it's my big bro, you know, uh, like big bro shing. Yeah. Anyway, so he's being really affectionate. There's another term they're about to use called dage, which is like older brother. I think in an affectionate way. That was when Lin Yu realized that this dage, whose build was not very burly, was actually formidable. Each of his moves and gestures was immeasurably adept, and he kept a cool head during battle too. Once he entered battle, he would emit an oppressive battle spirit that would cause others to stay back just from looking at him. Lin Yu gradually started to know more people the longer he was in the military camp, but he would always like to compare them to Lin Wan Yua. He found that in the entire infantry camp, excluding the including the team leaders and group leaders, none of them seemed to be as strong in battle as his Shinge. But Lin Wan Yua still remained as a normal soldier. Lin Yu could not understand why at all. Lin Yu's family had been in the military for generations. He naturally knew that Grand General Li, Li Mu's army had the strictest military law, and he would never allow appointment based on favoritism. Lin Yu did not dare to ask Lin Fei Xing why he did not get promoted for two years, so he had no choice but to slowly search for answers. After about a year of observation, Lin Yu finally realized the reason why. He found that Lin Wan Yua was a very solitary person. For the past two years, no one in the entire military camp other than Lin Yu would voluntarily talk to her. The reason was very simple. Lin Wan Yua was very out of the group. In the military camp, the way for lads to build up friendship was very simple. Training together, washing up at the river together, or even using the same military prostitute, or to go for a stroll along the city during an off day. These were all approaches to build friendships among soldiers, but Lin Wan Yua had never participated in them before. Lin Yu's body suddenly developed after being in the troops for years. His height went up in bursts, and now he was a half a head taller than Lin Wan Yua, but her big and tall image within his heart had never shrunk. By the time they arrived at the tent for meals, it was already packed full of people. Lin Wan Yua stood where she was, far away from it, while Lin Yu ran with big steps into the crowd to squeeze his way through. A short while later, he brought out two big bowls of rice that were covered with only green vegetables and a piece of meat. Shinga, here! Lin Wan Yua received the bowl of food given by Lin Yu and then said, Thank you. Lin Yu grinned, revealing a row of neat teeth. He said to Lin Wan Yua, What's there to think between you and I, brothers? Guh, you always say thank you to me. Lin Wan Yua did not say any more. The two of them came to a maroon colored post, then they sat down on the ground under it. They held up their big bowls and started to eat. Shinga, have you heard? 
There may be a coming battle in the next few days. Oh. There isn't any specific information, but based on my observations, it definitely won't be long before a battle comes. Lin Wan Yua stuffed another mouthful of rice in her mouth to chew. Then she turned her head towards Lin Yu, waiting for him to continue speaking. Lin Yu gave a pleased smile. Then he picked up the piece of meat in his bowl as he said to Lin Wan Yua, Based on my long-term observations, the meat in our bowls will always stealthily become thicker whenever it's time for a battle. Usually it would be the thickness of a pinky, but when it's time for battle, it would become as thick as a thumb. As he said that, Lin Yu put the bowl aside, then he reached out the thumb of his other hand for comparison. Lin Wan Yu appeared over. Sure enough, it really was the thickness of a thumb. Let's just eat. Lin Wan Yu continued to busy herself by stuffing food in her mouth. Battles were no longer anything new for her. After being in the troops for two years, Lin Wan Yu had already fought a total of 98 battles, both big and small. She remembered that number clearly. Lin Wan Yu and Lin Yu went to give back their bowls together after the meal. Lin Yu had wanted to run errands for Lin Wan Yu many times before, but she rejected him every time. She simply did not want to squeeze with a crowd of men as her body with an extremely big secret. But for anything other than that, Lin Wan Yu would do it herself. She would absolutely not trouble others. Once the bowl was returned, Lin Wan Yu walked out of the crowd, but unexpectedly, Lin Yu followed along. Lin Wan Yu was somewhat confused, but Lin Yu said with a cheeky grin before she could speak, Gah, there's a battle coming up in the next few days. I'll follow you for extra training. It's still better late than never, after all. You can give me more pointers and such. Let's go. Other than the daily drill, Lin Wan Yu would always give herself four hours of extra training, even through the wind and rain, for the last two years. And even if a battle had been fought, when everyone had gone back to rest in utter exhaustion, Lin Wan Yu would still push her exhausted body to have four hours of extra training. She had to survive. She still carried the bloody debt of 118 lives. That was the blood oath she had taken when she kneeled before the village entrance, as she breathed in the stench of burning corpses, as she looked at the fierce flames before her. However, she was a woman. Her endurance and force of strength could not compare to men, and her opponents were the Huns, who were even more built and skilled in fighting than the men of the Li Kingdom. If she slacked off even so slightly, she would be dead in the battlefield. Lin Wan Yua did not fear death. She had never thought about going back alive in every battle she was in, and that was why she killed the most ferociously and most recklessly. However, the will to survive was a part of everyone's instincts. Uh, these poor babies. Uh, I love, I love Lin Yu. Every, every really antisocial character needs a goofy one that just fills the empty silence with talk. <laughs> Gotta have the goofball. Chapter three, able to draw a bow to the full moon. Lin Wan Yu brought Lin Yu to the empty ground by the military camp. That was where many broken or useless old weapons were dumped in, and Lin Wan Yu was a regular customer here. She ruffled through the pile of weapons. Then she took out a... I'm going to double check. Okay. P O O Pao Pao and then Pao Do Bo. Pao Do. It's a Pao Do. Okay. She took out a Pao Do to give to Lin Yu. She said, find a place over there and do a thousand cleaves by yourself. Let's see, what is a powdo? Let us, I'm gonna assume maybe like a staff? Tell me, internet, what is it? Internet. Oh, it's one of those long staffs that has the sh sharp end. <laughs> it's the stabby staff that you see in like all the, you know, what's that game? There's a character in a fighting game that has one of those, but anyway. So, a powdo. That is how you say it. I lost my page. Come back. Where's, there we go. Gah, is that really all there is? Lin Yu was greatly disappointed. He'd thought that Lin Wan Yu would teach him some secret techniques. Lin Yu had seen Lin Wan Yu's abilities in the battlefield. Every single move and gesture was efficient and clean with a frightening might. He'd thought that Lin Wan Yu's ancestors had passed down some technique, but when he followed over here full of delight, this was the result. Lin Wan Yu, it's hard to say this because the last syllable Y U E is actually two sounds, and I'm not used to Wan Yu Wu Yu Wu Yu Wu. Lin Wan Yu 
stopped what she was doing. She straightened up her body. Then she turned her head back to look at Lin Yu, who had a face of unhappiness. Suddenly her mind wandered. If her younger brother Fei Xing was still alive, wouldn't he be like this now? Oh no. Oh no, supplement younger brother. Oh no. Oh no, the shades of past losses. Oh god. Lin Wan Yu's heart softened at the thought. She came to Lin Yu's side, then she explained for the first time ever. Spears are commonly used by Li Kingdom's infantry soldiers, but from what I see after two years of fighting with the Huns in nearly a hundred battles, the spear is inferior on the battlefield. The Huns mostly use scimitars and they enjoy close combat. Using a spear in such close distances is disadvantageous. While it would have a certain effect against cavalry, the Hun cavalry has a very accurate have very accurate horseback archers. They would always target soldiers with spears from a long distance. Spears practically can't parry arrows, which is why our army's infantry soldiers' casualty rate has been unusually high. Once you've gotten used to the pow, pow dao, how did I say it was? Pow do, pow do. Once you've gotten used to the pow do, if you were to encounter close combat situations, you would have a higher chance of winning when you throw the spear away to take up the pow do instead. Lin Yu stood where he was, holding a pow do in his hands. He looked at Lin Wan Yua with a face of astonishment. Her theory finally sunk in after a good while. After considering it deeply, he found that what Lin Wan Yua said was indeed true. The displeasure on Lin Yu's face vanished, while the oil of admiration was ignited. The way that he looked at Lin Wan Yua changed, too. Aw, oh, so she's a strategic genius. She knows things. Lin Yu stood where he was, holding up. Oh, no, I just read that. Seeing the change in Lin Yu's expression, Lin Wan Yu knew that he understood her care in the matter. With relief in her heart, she did not speak anything more. She turned around to continue rummaging through the pile of weapons. Lin Yu did not dare to delay. Keeping his feet in an open stance and both hands gripping the powdo, he started to cleave in earnest. But his gaze would occasionally drift to Lin Wan Yu. As he looked at his daga, who wasn't very built, a thought emerged in his heart. To be able to point out a military malpractice in one pierce of a needle, the average general would be something like this, right? As his mind wandered, an intensity suddenly rose from the bottom of Lin Yu's heart. Where was there any man who held no ambition, who did not seek high positions and wealth? Lin Yu's family had been in the military for generations, but the one who had been the most successful was his great-grandfather, with just a hundred land rights. As Lin Yu looked at Lin Wan Yu, he felt that he truly had a good eye to get such a good daga. To follow a daga like Lin Wan Yu, building success in life was only a matter of time. Lin Wan Yu's eyes lit up. She took out a bow from the pile of weapons. She weighed it in her hands right away. Then she looked it all over as she flipped it around, feeling its grooves. She could not take her hands off it. Then she noticed a tiny crack on the bow's body where it was connected to the bowstring. This crack had appeared insignificant, was enough to let a perfectly good bow lose its accuracy. Perhaps that was why it had been thrown away. Lin Wan Yu held the black bow in her hands. Those who could possess such a bow would be a rank above a battalion commander at least. Mm -hmm. Uh, hard to s hate to say it, but this writer clearly hasn't tried to close in the formation of spears with a short sword. Spears are the queen of weapons. <laughs> Listen, how many of us actually have any real... Okay, that's probably y'all folks. Somebody here is probably some kind of military specialist, but she try to make the point that the character's smart. But I get what you're saying. I don't know anything about war. It's never been my interest, really, so I don't know what... what it made sense to me. Sounded, like, smart. Um, and Akatsuki is right. It is female general, so she's obviously got to end up being... Somebody's going to notice that she's super good at this and going to... And I have a feeling Lin Yu's going to have something to do with her sudden promotion. And then, of course, that's how she'll meet the princess, and then the secret will come out at some point. All right. Uh, Shinge, I wasn't that far from you at the last battle at Hulu. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm sure this is just a Chinese word, but Hulu, Hulu Valley took me by surprise. It's spelled just like the, just like the streaming app. So they had a battle at Hulu Valley. Sorry. I'm sure that's just a place. <laughs> Shinga, I wasn't that far from you during the last battle at Hulu Valley. It was so terrifying to see you fighting with a Hun a whole head taller than you, and I wanted to go over to help you. But in the end, you slit his throat before I even walked halfway there. God, did you take on some technique passed down from your ancestors? Could you teach me a little? 
Lin Yu's words warmed Lin Wan Yu's heart, but when she tore her eyes away from the black bow to look at Lin Yu doing his cleaves, she furrowed her brows at once. She said with displeasure, "'What are you doing?' Hearing this, Lin Yu answered blankly, "'I was practicing cleaves, as you said.' Lin Wan Yu sighed quietly. She carried the bow on her back, then came to Lin Yu's side to take the pow dough from him. She said, "'If you practice like that, it won't have any effect.' And if you got used to it, it would eventually be disastrous for you. I agreed to give you extra training to let you survive all the way to the end, not to cause you harm. I love this. Since we know that this is obviously going to be a gay, you know, lesbian story, this isn't a building romance. And I kind of love the effect that, like, going into gay fiction, you get to know right away that most of the hetero relationships will be friendly or familial. And you don't always get that. Like, not always, you know, straight fiction, they might not let any of the characters have just familiar relationships, but obviously this guy's gonna be, like, a new little brother for her. It's adorable. I love it. She swung the powdo in her hands as she said that. Following her cleaves, the huh, huh, huh sound of wind could be heard continuously. Every time its blade broke through the air, its sound would have a tempo. No matter its length, the pause between them, or the volume of it, they were all completely uniform. Lin Yu stood beside Lin Wan Yua, as he felt the rush of wind from the cleaves hitting his face again and again, and when he saw how the rusty Pao had become a formidable force in Lin Wan Yua's hands at once, when he thought back to how he did it just now, Lin Yu wished he could find a crack in the ground and burrow inside of it. Lin Wan Yua cleaved for dozens of times in one go before giving the Pao back to Lin Yu. Then she continued, Put all of your strength into every bow. Blow. Memorize the feeling. Let it become your instincts. Reserve your strength for when you aren't dealing a blow, but once you make a move, put in your full strength. You have to get used to this level of force because the Huns will not go easy on us. After a pause, Lin Wan Yua continued again. My family doesn't have any techniques passed down from our ancestors. We didn't even have a military registration before I enlisted. We were a normal farming family. You don't need to be envious. It's very easy for you if you want to learn. You just need to do as I said. Put all of your strength into every cleave. Whatever you're practicing, imagining, m imagine that the one standing before you is a Hun. Speculate what direction they will charge at, what angle their scimitar would come at, and think of how you would break that and counterattack on their weakest points. If you use one weapon enough times, you'll naturally know how to employ its advantages and power without needing others to teach you. What kind of angles to use, what kinds of situations to use it in, it'll come to you. The difference between life and death only takes one moment in the battlefield. Fancy techniques have no use on it. Lin Wan Yua stopped the topic there. She walked to his side, then took down the black bow from her back to do her own thing. As for Lin Yu, his heart felt heavy for some reason after hearing this long chain of words from Lin Wan Yua. Although Lin Wan Yua spoke lightly of it, Lin Yu could still hear bleakness and melancholy that was unique to her between her words. Lin Wan Yua gripped the black bow in her hand. She opened her stance, took in a deep breath, then she raised the bow up. Her eyes turned sharp, too. Following the rubbing sound that came from the tense bow and tense bowstring in her hand and her ca God, I need to get new glasses. I can't reach it. Though this is also just dyslexia brain throwing all these words everywhere. Between the tense bowstring and her calloused hands, she slowly drew the bow open. Mm -hmm. Uh, excellent bow, Lin Wan. Oh, my. Lin Wan Yua gritted her teeth as she drew the black bow in her hands into a full moon. Ooh, the whole thing's circular. That's neat. When she let go, the sound of the bowstring's tremor was penetrative and pleasing to the ear. Excellent bow, Lin Wan Yua praised it from the bottom of her heart. What a shame that its dam damaged accuracy was too big a flaw for bows. Lin Yu could hear this was an excellent bow, too. Hence, he stopped what he was doing to come to Lin Wan Yu's side again. This truly is an excellent bow. Who would throw it away? Lin Wan Yu pointed at the crack on the bow. It lost its accuracy. Its body needs to be changed, but just getting a new bow would be much faster. Lin Yu cried out, what a shame, as he looked at the crack on the bow. But on second thought, such an excellent bow would never reach two normal infantry soldiers like them if it wasn't for that. Guh, let me have a try? Lin Wan Yua nodded, then she handed the bow to Lin Yu. Lin Yu accepted the black bow. He opened his stance with one step forward and one step back, then he pulled hard. The bowstring did not move. 
Lin Yu widened his eyes, then he used his greatest strength. Following the squeak of its bowstring rubbing against his hand, it was drawn halfway, but could go no further. Lin Yu's face had gone thoroughly red from the effort, but he could not draw the bow fully like Lin Wan Yua did. He ultimately deflated like a leather ball and gave up. This... this is a two-stone two bow. Gah. And, and it's its tombstone. It's two... why is that hard to say? Two-stone bow. Gah, you can actually draw a two-stone bow? A few days ago, I saw the qualifications for the Flying Feather Battalion Commander was just to be able to draw a two-stone bow. You could be a battle commander! Lin Wanyua shook her head. She said, It won't be of any use with my drawing speed. I would just miss opportunities during battle. And even worse, I'd be shot dead before I could even shoot. Lin Wan Yua could not tell Lin Yu why she had no intentions for any official positions, hence she had to deflect the question by not answering directly. That day, Lin Wan Yua and Lin Yu did extra training in the empty ground until it was time for dinner, which needs no further elaboration. This is super cute. I love it. And they're building her up so much. Like, all her internal dialogue is like, I have to work three times as hard so no one will see through my disguise. And all the dialogue from outside is like, holy shit, she's a war god! How is she so good at this? <laughs> Chapter 4. Diminished Fragrance and Shattered Jade. The Fall of Ching Cheng. Nope, I said that wrong. Ching... Ching Cheng. Ching Cheng. The Fall of Ching Cheng. Oh god, how do I say that? It would be Tian Du? After... <laughs> so... Ooh, Tian Du. In Tiandu City, the capital of Li Kingdom, inside a splendid palace chamber that leaned nearer to the east in the royal palace's axis, dozens of palace maids and eunuchs were walking around. However, not a sound could be heard in the entire courtyard. Everyone breathed quietly. Even their footsteps were careful and controlled in a manner of great trepidation. Xian, 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 yeah, it would be Xian Er. Xian Er will stay. The rest may go now. Understood. On a spacious bed with an intricately carved bed frame that was lined with exquisite drapes, there lay a woman who was breathing weakly. The order had been given by her. Though her voice was very quiet, one could not help but feel that they dared not disobey once they heard it. Empress Mother! Xian Er, come. Sit by Empress Mother's side. Let Empress Mother have a good look at you. The woman who lay on the bed was the Lee Kingdom's mother of a king. Was the Lee Kingdom's mother of a kingdom? I don't know what that means. Mother of a kingdom? I guess it's it's implying she's like the mother of the king of the people. She's the empress. Li Ching Chong. Presently, she appeared frail and waning, but the strength of character throughout her was hard to forget after one look. Her natural air of nobility made one dare not underestimate her as expected of the number one beauty in the Lee Kingdom twenty years ago. Even though twenty years had hurried by, one could still see the remnants of a beauty that could overthrow cities from her face. Li Xian sat quietly by Empress Li Qingcheng's side. As she looked at her Empress Mother, who'd gotten so dreadfully thin, tears trickled silently down her cheeks. Seeing her daughter like this, Li Qingcheng revealed a ghastly pale smile. She said, Empress Mother has always been sick for the past few years. I've not gotten a good look at my little princess in time. Xian Er has grown up. Empress Mother! Li Xian held up Li Ching Chang's. Chang's fi, nah. Li Ching Chang. Ching Chang. Li Ching Chang. Li Ching Chang's hand that rested outside the covers lightly. I'm sorry, the way that I sometimes just stop and repeat words must sound like a fever dream. Like, what? Is the video stuttering? Sorry, I'm just trying to make it more second nature. <clears throat> she did not dare to put any strength into her hold. She could feel the bones in Li Ching Chong's hand, and under her fair white skin, every vessel of blood could be seen. The hand appeared so fragile that it might shatter with one knock. Xian Er, do not feel upset for Empress Mother. Empress Mother no longer has any regrets. I just worry for you and your brother. <coughs> Empress Mother, call for the Imperial Doctor! Li Xian held Li Ching Chong's hand as big beads of tears spilled over the frame of her eyes. It traced over the face that looked 70% similar. Okay. 
Uh, it traced over the face that looked 70% similar to Li Cheng Chung. Then it crashed heavily on the vivid red brocade blanket. The teardrops were quickly absorbed, leaving a dark red spot like a dried blood stain. Silly child, wouldn't you know about Emperor, Empress Mother's health? Let us mother and daughter have some time together. Empress Mother has something to say to you. Uh, the reason she keeps saying Empress Mother is like it's a, a it's like a respect thing if you're that like that noble and, it, and you refer to yourself in the third person. Um, this is just the like closest English equivalent. There's probably a phrase or something like a uh, her name and and then like a honorific. That's not I don't know if that's the word, but that's why she keeps calling herself in the third person. Li Xian nodded. She abided by Li Ching Chong's order, but the spots of dark red on the brocade blanket were quickly increasing. Li Ching Chong gasped coarsely. Her chest was rising and falling severely, as if she was trying hard to bear the discomfort of her body, and as if she was trying hard to persevere in something. Xian Er, in the future, if you marry, remember to choose with your heart. Empress Mother believes in my daughter's eyes. Do not think too much about matters of marriage. You, dear child, can't let me. Rest assured. Mm, Empress Mother, Xian Er understands. And your younger brother, your younger brother's health isn't good. It might actually be better if he does not sit in that position. If he thinks so too, he should express that early. Senior, senior? Senior? It's spelled weird. I think, is this meant to be? Okay, I'm gonna Google this word. Uh-huh. I think this is just senior spelled weird. It doesn't look... Oh, it's a... Okay! Um, it is a feudal lord or the lord of a manor. I didn't even know this was a real word! <laughs> S-E-I-G-N-E-U-R. Say Sanyer. Sanyer. So it's kind of pronounced like senior. Sanyer. Sanyer Chi. So he's a feudal lord. Uh, hello. Uh, folks that have joined us, welcome. Uh, Sanyer Chi is considerate. He'll definitely, definitely not. <coughs> Empress Mother, Xian Er understands. Reporting her lady, the Empress, the Crown Prince is here. Hearing the report of the palace made outside, Li Cheng Chang's eyes that had been dimmed flashed with a trace of light. Let the Crown Prince come in, Li Xian rushed to say first. The door to the bedchamber was opened with a creak. Wearing black robes embroidered with gold thread and a white jade heir's crown on his head, a child walked inside. He was the crown prince of the Li kingdom, Li Ju. The face of this child was a reflection of his older sister, Li Xian, though there was more of a man's spirit in his brows and eyes. Not much could be described of his build that was still small, and the paleness to his complexion gave him a sense of fragility despite the prestigious outfit. Empress Mother... Royal sister, Li Ju came obediently before Li Ching Chong's bed. Then he gave a courtesy towards his mother and older sister. Come, royal son, let Empress Mother have a look. Yes, Empress Mother. The eight-year-old Li Ju stood upright before Li Ching Chong's bed. His methodical manner was already equipped with the likeness of an emperor. Seeing her son and daughter before her eyes, Li Ching Chong revealed a relieved smile. She looked at Li Ju, then said with a lot of effort, Royal son, remember to do as your older sister says. Empress mother! Li Ju was only an eight-year-old after all. Even though he'd always been taught to conceal his anger and delight, he still ended up in tears when he saw his mother in such a state. Li Cheng Chong's fuzzy gaze went between her son and daughter. Ultimately, she took a look at the tightly shut chamber door. She wanted to speak, but she stopped herself. In the end, she gave a faint and quiet sigh. Then she closed her eyes slowly. Jue'er, JJ asks you this. Do you wish to ascend to the throne? Uh-huh. Jue'er does. At the Lee Kingdom's border. So now we're jumping away. Geh, wear this, quick! Lin Yu gave a three-finger-wide strip of sackcloth to Lin Wan Yue. Lin Wan Yua took the strip of sackcloth to tie on her head like Lin Yu did. She asked in a low voice, What happened? Lin Yu pa pressed his voice low to say to her, Her lady the Empress has passed. Oh, 
Lin Wan Yua nodded. Lin Yu continued to say, Her Lady the Empress is our Marshal's blood-related younger sister. Lin Yu looked at Lin Wan Yua's somewhat surprised expression. He sighed to himself. This Dage have, of his had much too low of a sensitivity towards, pro, po, towards politics. Other than killing the Huns, he did not seem to care about anything else. How could that go on? So he explained kindly. Guh, you're not from a military family, so you probably don't know. General Li Mu's father was the sworn brother of the previous emperor, who granted him the surname of the kingdom. The old general had one son and one daughter. His son is our General Marshal Li Mu, while the daughter married the Crown Prince, who is now our present emperor. Lin Wan Yua opened her mouth, but before she spoke, the low and deep sound of the signal horn traveled over. Enemy invasion! It was as if Lin Wan Yua changed into a different person at once when she heard the signal horn. She grabbed the coarse cloth rucksack on the bed quickly to carry on her back. Then she took up the spear on the stand before rushing out of the tent. Lin Yu followed close behind. The two of them came to their respective troops. Once the troops had assembled, the archers ascended the barrack wall. The war drums were pounded, and its don, don, don sounds shared a frequency to Lin Wan Yu's heartbeat. The ground started to quake slightly. With two years of experience, Lin Wan Yu could now determine how many Huns had come by the quake of the ground. She could feel from the amplitude this was going to be a tough battle to be fought. Get ready! Shoot! Following the captain's orders, the so, so, so sound of arrows breaking through the air echoed around the campgrounds. The whinnies of the Huns' warhorses traveled over from far away. Mixed within them was a sorrowful noise. Pa! One of the archers that had been shot fell from the barrack wall. He landed not far away from Lin Wan Yu's group. She turned back for a look. An arrow had sunk in far more than an inch between his eyebrows. The flag signal for the various battalions had started to move. Lin Wan Yua looked at the signal in front of her. Protect the archers, infantry soldiers to stand directly ahead, cavalry on pincer movements. Lin Wan Yua gripped a spear in one hand while the other tightened around the powdo in her waist. Following the sound of the war drums, the barrack wall was drawn open. Charge! The pioneer commander roared, and the infantry soldiers who were first to bear the brunt charged. I think that's a good place to stop. <laughs> what a lovely story! I've heard very, very good things about this and been excited to start it and thought it'd be fun to read on stream. Next time we'll do Scum Villain since it's been a little while. Uh, I think we'll alternate the three stories for a bit. This one, is, the reason I chose this of all the works this author has is because it's the shortest. It's only, only 168 chapters. Uh, her other very famous story is 300, um, and that's bigger than anything we've read. Heaven Official's Blessing's like 250, I think, and Scum Villain's like 90. Scum villain short, and it hasn't been fully translated, so we'll have to pause to keep reading that one. So uh, we're gonna read this one then. Um, we will add more stuff eventually. I, I really want to kind of give folks a wide variety of stuff because there's so many cool works of fiction out there in this this uh, style of work, and it's not always easy to access or find or even to read if you're not used to the difference in in cadence and translation and the words. So I think it's fun to read aloud. Thanks for listening. I will be back on Thursday. Wednesday is my day off, if you want to call grocery shopping day off. Um, we will do uh, probably some more Persona on Thursday. Uh, more Silent Hill this weekend. If you like what I do and you want to support it, please consider becoming a member for as little as 99 cents a month. You can get access to lots of bonus content, download my work for off-internet uh, streaming, uh, all kinds of stuff. You can also donate, you can buy my books, buy my t-shirts, all kinds of stuff. All those links are in the description. Also, be sure to check out the uh, actual page for this work and the translators. They work very hard to make all of this available to all of us, so support them if you can as well. Uh, yeah, I think that is everything. I will be back uh, and uh, do more stuff on Thursday. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.